Hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. Uh, this is part two of uh, wing removal. We'll get into some details here. First, I want to have a little bit of a show off time of some of the tools that I've acquired recently. One of these is a power driver or power screwdriver with interchangeable bits. Very handy and uh, the bits can be changed very quickly. If they break, change them. Um, you can get multiple bit boxes uh, off eBay or anywhere, which is handy. Now, the selection of battery powered stuff I have with sockets obviously is uh, gives me speed when working. Now, back to this power driver. This will actually torque ratchet off screws. If you don't want one of those, you can always use an adapter in a drill. Works just as well. So we have a quarter inch drive, quarter inch drive screwdrivers. Easy done and a cheap way of doing it. Third one I have here is a 3.8 gun for um, different fittings as well as uh, spline drive or Torx drives. These sort of bits can be um, used in a driver but usually for doing up rather than uh, trying to undo rusty stuff. Battery power is definitely the way to go and with this angle grinder here which is a one inch blade for quick cutting it's just for cutting out these um, odd and awkward bolts that you find and like this one here seized up a captive nut on the other end using the battery power grinder means you can quickly get in somewhere cut a nut off and away you go okay so the front grille defender is held on by a set of screws screwed into uh, plastic fixings two on the bottoms three on either side like so um, some of the screws are accessible with a power driver as you can see here, and a couple of them are not. The downside of having uh, equipment that's battery powered is quite cumbersome, so we're still reliant on the old traditional screwdrivers on occasion. Okay, so the side repeater, you twist and remove and pull the bulb out, keep it out of the way. Headlamps, as I said in the earlier video, you have two adjuster screws here, and for the panel to remove two screws and then you have to remove your indicator and a side marker lamp. Right, so easy job done with a power screwdriver. Now what I've noticed is that some of the looms are a bit short on the, the front here, um, which is a trouble actually fitting the fittings back in. However, you move two screws here, which lets you access the screws for the lamp unit. Be aware that when you remove the screws, they might actually drop down and disappear. Um, it's happened a couple of times at changing the lamps on this vehicle. So just be aware of that. All right, so behind the filter, you have a sneaky bracket here. It's bolted to the inner wing, and it also provides a riv nut for the fuel filter, which is this bolt here I'm pointing to. The thing I'll show you here is that we actually wound the bolt out so we had some of the shank before we cut it. It made it much easier to cut. Taking the head off is a lot more work. Now you can see this is easy to do whereas the header tank, I'd advise not use an angle grinder here because even if you can cut the nut you'll probably melt some of the header tank through the heat of friction of cutting. Right, so this panel here, okay, using a power driver to remove the screws is very easy. Just be aware when you're screwing it back in, it's better to finish it off by hand so you don't crack it. This is a good access hole to uh, get the nuts and the bolts that are holding the header tank on. Now again, these were seized and I had to snap these off. They're quite easy to do because they're M6, they're not exactly too thick. So a couple of spanners will do it, but I've used a socket and a spanner to snap them off. Just remember, a header tank here has a nut and a bolt on the back end. Now this bracket is a bit of a pain in the back side. Unless you undo it from the um, bottom of the... Uh, in a wing you're going to find that it's going to get in the way so just be aware of that when you're taking the inner wing out the aerial this is quite easy to do if you can understand all the way things undo now screwing out the center of the aerial what we found once we'd actually removed it that the aerial was uh, more than useless because it uses an earth on the wing you can see it's corroded here now this is something we're going to actually chuck away and uh, put a new one in this panel here is a bit of a nightmare because it has pegs on it which push in. 
Now, pulling it off, there is a very big risk of snapping them, and that's exactly what happened. What you'll find with screws that are rusty, they actually expand, and even in plastic, they will um, grip a lot harder. That's why I'm using a pair of pliers on the plastic fitting at the back so I could undo the screw. Alright, for more fittings on the eyebrow, I told you in the last video that removing this is just a matter of pushing out the plastic fitting. That's all well and good, and there is a whole row of them, there's two rows of them actually, all the way around the spat. Now these, if you didn't get it the last time, you have to push these out with something which is exactly the right size. Screwdriver will damage it. If you want to keep these, um, then you need to use a pin punch. All right, so they're fairly simple. You can get these um, from uh, Bearmark. What you'll have to do is scrap about if you're um, <coughs> being frugal and find all the bits because they'll drop out all over the place. Um, if you buy a set like this, then you're laughing. Or if you know a discovery owner, they also have these which holds a plastic trim on underneath the doors. Now to fit them, I didn't show this in the last video, but what you do um, is in the hole, is just put them in and tap it through. Now that is secure. That's all that needs to be done. With the eyebrow at the front, you also have a bolt just here, a bolt and a nut, and this has to be undone, otherwise you will not get it off. Right, so actually taking this off, we got so far and all the bits fell on the floor. And the last one, we hadn't pushed the tab all the way through, so what happened, it wouldn't come off. They're actually quite resilient. It's worth pushing it through and not giving it a tug. Push the peg through until it comes out, drops on the floor, and then you can pull the rest of it out like so. See, easy done. Then it's a matter of scrabbling about on the floor to find these pieces. The thing about taking the eyebrow off is it can reveal this area here. Now you'll see the corrosion just at this point. This is a very bad, or should I say a weak point of the bulkhead. Basically it traps water and dirt in this area. As you can see here, it's covered the bolt completely and we've had to clean it off to access this nut and bolt. If you look up here, this is paint that has been stripped by brake fluid. Uh, this is possibly due to a sloppy filling of the reservoir just a bit above it. Just a little bit of rust like this is actually hiding a lot more underneath because the rust has been growing. Now what I'll do is I'll give it a little tap and remove the paint and you can see how rusty this section is. The bulkhead itself is actually quite vulnerable and uh, tapping about, just having a, a listen to see if there's any other weak spots here, it is actually quite solid. Um, this is just a, a bit of a corrosion assessment, it's okay. Now what I'll do, this area I'll just show you, if I tap it a little bit harder, I'm actually going to knock it through. That's the truth about what the corrosion is like on these bulkheads. They are an utter nightmare. Um, they don't get corrosion protected properly. Okay, so going back to the wing attachments, these four bolts up along here, which hold the inner wing to the outer wing, they are, well, they shouldn't seize into place because they've got a coarse thread but you'll have to be a little bit of a contortionist to get in there with a socket and ratchet or ratchet spanner or just a normal spanner and undo them. They will come undone because all they are is a, um, a captive uh, clip that's clipped into the wing on the other side. Right, I'll show you them here. The thing is when you put the wing back on, make sure that they are shown through the hole so you can get these of course, thread back into them. These bolts here are oh, their nuts and bolts fitted through here. Uh, yeah, you have to be a contortionist to get these ones. But through this area here, you should have no problem at all. Use a uh, longer socket. The nut and bolt here, clean the thread off with a wire brush, WD-40, and it will come undone. These two here are okay. These two shouldn't be a problem. They're quite easy to undo. And this one, nut and bolt, clean the thread, WD-40, and undo it. Now, through the wing here, you can get to the top bolt and at the bottom use an extension. What you'll find that when you get halfway up that you're actually going to have to use a wobble bar to get at an angle 
So you have an angle on a wobble bar to get to the top bolt here because there is an obstruction in the way. You'll also find at the bottom where we undone the nut and bolt, there's a bracing strap just here that will stop your wing from coming out. So you have to bend it up just slightly. It'll probably take you a good couple of hours to undo all the bits and pieces first time, especially since corrosion will hold things in. But once it's been taken off, putting it on is it's a lot quicker. You see here, I've got a few nuts and bolts left over. They're the old ones. I chuck them away and fit new nuts and bolts every time. Now, the fittings here... I would advise never to leave any of these studs out because it will make the wing flap about. If the wind catches it, it can drum as you're driving at speed. So just be aware of that. These fittings are not very expensive and it's worth fixing properly. Right, so, you know, you take your wing off and you have access to a great deal of um, space on your Land Rover. This makes work quite easy actually for doing things like suspension, suspension turrets, work on your bulkhead. As you can see we've actually got a lot of work to do on this, uh, especially down this area. As you've noticed this is actually a trap for water, moisture, dirt and corrosion. So in the following series, possibly in a couple of months, we're going to have to have this bulkhead off and repair it completely.